My name is Louis C. Gross II. I'm an educational uh, consultant for MSI, which stands for Manhood Shelter Incorporated. But before I get started, I want to say hello to my granddaughter. Hello, Molly Palmer. I love you. And granddaddy will be coming in soon. By the way, have you been good or have you been bad? That's the question that my granddaughter always asks me. So I'm gonna ask a couple of these politicians the same thing. Oh, one other issue. Moretta, I mean, Rosetta, I'm very sorry that you lost Dennis. He's a good, very good friend of our family. And our condolences go out to you. Just want to you know, let, let it be known that we care. And we care about you. Thank you very much. Honey, take care. And I'll be seeing you soon. Now, we need to talk about some things that are very interesting that's happening in this city. But one of the other issues I want to say is uh, the question is, why me? Why me? That's a, the question that always rings and resonates in all hospitals, in all homes, when you find out you have cancer. It's a, tough, it's a tough pill to swallow. But the only thing I can say to you is this. You have to not give up. You got to get up off your behind every day and do something. You got to be productive. And you can beat it. Exercise, diet, and a will to live. And no pity parties. And I'm always, I'm always there with you. And hopefully, like with me, things work out. You just gotta keep on pushing. And with that, we can move into what's going on in our city. And it looks kind of bad because everywhere you're looking, you see that the police departments are not really well trained and they're taking out animosities that happen in their life onto other people's lives. Do you know that the Chicago Police Department at one time had 13,500 policemen? And now it's down to 1,200, 12, let's see, 12,400. Which means that this overtime goes to taxpayers' pocketbook. What you should really do is hire some new people, diversify and get this old boy's, you know, the blue coal out of, out, of, out of the system. And by the way, things are changing. People no longer just sit idly by and let you do what you want to do, politicians. I'm talking about the all of them, there's 50 wards, and what's happening with that? You know, sometimes you call the, the ward office and you can't even get the all of it. These people are making $117,000 a year plus expenses. Why can't you get the all of them? Why can't they get back to you? And by the way, how is your ward in, in terms of uh, the sewage system, in terms of streets? I know for a fact, uh, Bill, from 95th Street to 87th Street, the roads are in shambles, and they've been that way for over a year. Streets and Sanitation came out and worked on it and left it just like it was. You know, matter of fact, it was worse than, than what they did in terms of repairing. You have all these people coming into your neighborhood who don't really give a care about what's happening in terms of how your neighborhood looks and in, in terms of the repairs. They have to do it. What's happening with, with, you know, with our elected officials? We look at Springfield. Do you know that 39% of uh, the state senators are up for re-election as opposed to 79% in California? See, you know, you need to look at what's going on. When I, when I think about Rahner, I think about how he came into office, how he bought the office, and also how I remember the Tribune reporter had to quit because he had found out some stuff about his business dealings <laughs> and the powers that be wouldn't let it go, you know, let it go forth, so he quit. Which shows you what type of individual we're dealing with. So he's taking that business acumen into politics. And you know, we didn't hire you, we didn't vote for you to deal with your philosophy. We voted for you to deal with our philosophy. We the people, not I me. That goes for the mayor too. You know, uh, I'm seeing a lot of disparities there in terms of where he's at with the red light, with these tickets that you get for $35, they're double to 70. See, you know, people, you have to stand up for what you believe in. And that goes to, how many men do we have out here? 
How many times, where's your backbone at? You say yeah when you want to say no. You deal with people with arterial motives. You're laughing and grinning on one side, but you're hurting on the other side. I have someone to read. W.E.B. Du Bois. This double consciousness, this sense of always looking at oneself through the eyes of others, um, of measuring one's soul by the tape of a world that looks in amused contempt and pity. One ever feels his trueness, an American and a Negro, two souls, two thoughts, two unreconciled strivings, two warring ideals in one dark body, whose dog strength alone keeps it from being torn asunder. Well, W.E.B., it's torn asunder now. Because men, as I know, have left the arena. And, you know, for reasons that, you know, I need to keep my job, I, I, need, to, I need to survive. But every time you do that, that diminishes you as an individual. And we have to come together. We really do. Now, you lay back and you watch me, but if you like what I'm saying, turn the sponge head bar. See, because that's how they're treating you. That's how they're treating you out here. And it's time to end this. It's time to end this. And, and, and when we deal with our children, you know, it, it is so, so touching that a lot of our kids go to school hungry. For instance, <laughs> we had about 2,240 children that were homeless totally. And if that's the case, if they come to school, how can they think about A for algebra, B for biology, C for chemistry, D for discipline, and E for economics, when they think about H, hunger? And we, <laughs> as men, Black, white, whatever. And let me say something there about that. Come on, style studies. La muchacho, la muchacha. La señorita, la señorita, la señor. I mean, el señor. Also, Ohio in Japanese. Uh, I'll be praised in Arabic. And in, in English, how are you doing? Hope you're fine. And I come in peace. I, that's something I put in there. But anyway. Let's look at our teens. For one, <laughs> it says one in 12 teens attempted suicide. One in 12. Why are blacks less suicide prone than whites? Maybe one of the reasons that blacks are less suicide prone is because we've gone through so much in terms of trying to find our identity, trying to survive, Therefore, you can't have a pity party because you, you're trying to survive. Whereas, as they say in this article, a lot of uh, young white people meet certain uh, catastrophes and they, they fall under. I know for one thing, black tar heroin has invaded suburbia to the fact that a lot of the, uh, young people are coming in town over on Jackson, Adams and Jackson, to get their daily dose of that black tar foolishness and it shows that something's wrong in terms of our psyche any times we gotta escape reality for one reason or another and a lot of times we as the underdogs always feel as though the people on top shouldn't have any problems at all maybe it's that consciousness that's bugging them maybe now how's your child do you send them to school does the truant officer come by and say, look, your child hasn't been there, and you know it hasn't been there, you live right across the street from the school? What's with that? And then, you want to get angry when your child does something wrong, and you have to have a parent conference, and you're like, hey, Johnny didn't, he didn't do this, he didn't do that. Let me give you a scenario, what I've seen. Johnny's at home with his mother. His mother says, look at Johnny, if the landlord calls, Tell him I'm not home. <laughs> well, the landlord calls, and John answers the phone. Yeah, if you're the landlord, my mother told me to tell you she's not home. Do you know that that woman can't wait for that boy to get off the phone so he can whip him? And then when she had to deal with a parent conference, you know what she says? I don't know where he gets all this line from. See, there's a contradiction. Also, there's a contradiction in terms of TV, too. 
by the time a kid's 19 years of age, they've logged in about 200,000 hours of television time, watching any and everything. And that transfers into the classroom. They're sleepy, they're late, because it was up all night. But you as a parent didn't put them to bed, or you don't know when they really came in. And have you checked out their, 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 their living room? I mean, their dining room, I'm, I'm sorry, their bedroom. What's in there? You can have a Sherman tank in there. You don't know. I see a lot of kids come to school and the hygiene is not up to par. Why is that, parent? Don't you care? Yeah, I care. Yeah, well, then look in on it. You know, and tell him to pull his pants up, too. Nobody well, wants to see those stains in his butt. Now, I want to read something to you about your school. By the way, your district is 299. You need to know that. A lot of us go to school don't even know. There's a, there's a couple of books, uh, Satan in the Pulpit by Stan. Also, The New Class by DeGillis, a Russian author. And in the new class, he talks about the politicians, the quartermasters, the people that have the first divvies on whatever products that come through the country. They get it first. So therefore, by them getting it first, they become the new class. So that knocks out socialism, doesn't it? But the same thing happens with us. Think about it. Gifts from uh, donors and you're a politician, but you say it's okay. Another thing, when the church and state when the church and, uh, okay, religion and politics, they don't go hand in hand. Write Meeks, write Cory Brooks. Haven't heard anything from you since we had this debacle about a budget. We need to come together, everybody. We need representation. Taxation without representation. Do you remember that one? That's historical. And it's happening right now. Notre Damus talks about the end of the world. He said in 2012. So only four years later, look what's happening. Look what's happening to our society, our nation. My hat goes off, and I'm sorry for those five officers that got killed. But you have to realize what's going on. We in dire straits. I have a caller. Caller, question of concern, go ahead. Yes, good evening, and how you doing, partner? Hey. I was thinking about you yesterday, but I'm just going to make this comment first. Listen, you know what I think we need to do? Just like how we put Bibles in hospitals and Bibles in hotel rooms in people's houses, we need to put the big book. It must be everyone in this society need to read the big book. And uh, the big book in the... Um, into our program, you know, that thing of ours. I think people, it's a lot of things people could learn, you know, I mean, sometimes people really think they are smarter than what they are. Right. And then some people now these days really don't care about being smart. They just live in an eight, you know, they just get up and do You know, that, that's things. so true. Walking around. That's so true. They live in day to day. Damn business breathing it. But, I, I think they need, everybody need to read that big book. Then they need to come to some of the meetings sometimes, and they will get a full understanding of they self. See, once that you learn thyself, then you can help other people. That's true. But if you can't learn anything on your own as our politicians, how can they <laughs> help others? But it's just an idea. It's just one of those ideas I have. But listen, this is what I wanted to tell you. I was thinking about you uh, yesterday. You shared something with us last week, uh, the problem, the, the illness that you have. Yeah. Listen, we all... You're born to have illnesses. I don't know nobody who on this God's green earth don't have some form, fashion of illness. I never want to hear that come out your mouth again. You get busy because God got something for you, man. You have helped the many people over the years. I've listened to you many years. You, you, you got a gift. So what you need to do, man, leave that alone. Get busy in living and just keep on coming back. What's the old saying? Just keep coming back. Keep coming Everything back. will be revealed. So again, man, I think you're a hell of a good guy. 
you could be okay. And we enjoy seeing you every Friday. Let thank me get out the air so I can hear your response. And this is Steve. And, Steve, uh, thank you. I, I get a chance to talk to you some other time. We but, will. Uh, you just keep on doing what you're doing. Thank Thanks you. for taking the call. Let me get out there so I can hear your response. All right. And Steve is right. We don't need a pity party. Just keep living. Keep doing what you got to do. Get up, work out, eat, and move on. And be productive. As Fromm says, either you're non-productive or you're productive. As Alfred Allen says, you keep crying about this and crying about that, works into an uh, inferiority complex, which you really want to deal with because you want somebody to give you attention. You got to man up. And that's another reason why I was saying we need to man up in terms of our communities. We need to call in to us every Friday to let us know what your armament and what your state senator is doing. And we put them on blast. See, because it's a, it's a thing called accountability. You know, as they always say, being transparent. But I was reading an article about uh, a certain person where the red lights, the, the, the people that brought it here was a no-bid contract, and they were indicted for corruption under this administration. But nobody says anything about that. And now, oh, and now, another thing, I get tired of people applauding agencies that don't do their job. For instance, the FBI, Fidelity, Bravery, and Integrity. Now, one morning they dropped the ball. They were, uh, they're in Florida, they dropped the ball because that man said he called him and told him about it. But see, you know what I talk about that. Now they have him investigating Hillary Clinton. Of all, the, that's amazing to me. Who's investigating them? Because those people could have been saved if we had done what we were supposed to do. That's what I'm saying about the people that we hire or we elect to do a job. And as I see it now, and I know you see it, things aren't gelling like they're supposed to. People are not doing what they're supposed to. There's a thing called the Peter Principle. You reach your level of incompetency. That's also starting with the governor. It's starting in, in the uh, mayor's office. Springfield, the fossil. Talking about uh, Madigan. They held us hostage, people. They held us hostage. 424 organizations folded because of what? Term limits. See, that's, that's your thing. We the people. You're hired to, to, to do what? To govern and also look out for our needs. We need to start, you know, okay, it's all right to start, you know, to walk and all that in terms of we should overcome. Where have you overcome? Where are you at in the scheme of life? Matter of fact, you third string. The powers that be, that the major culture, then the Hispanic culture, now the Arab culture and the American Negroes culture. You got people in our neighborhoods that don't have the same feelings that we have about, you know, where we go from here. They have arterial motives to sell us, you know, food or whatever it is they sell. And they look at us like we, you know, we're thugs. Going to an Arab store, they look at your hands. You know, number one, anybody asks you, you know, to park yourself here, but now you're here. And, and, and then you cast this person to lie character. But what makes it so bad, you go on and buy that food stuff. It's not, on the, it's not on the Gold Coast. And by the way, police is different on the Gold Coast as opposed to the south side, the north side, the west side. And they had a 25-year plan. I went down to, what's that? Roosevelt Road. University of Illinois owns everything. Went to 35th Street. IIT owns everything. Matter of fact, they knocked down the projects. University of Chicago, sixty thirty, everything. Don't you see what's happening? And by the way, CPS is one of the second largest employers in the nation. This is Chicago. And you wonder why Ronald treats us the way he treats us. Did nobody vote for him here? Except two people I know. But anyway, we won't go there. But let me, let me, let me give you a breakdown of CPS. It's, it's District 229, pre-K to 12, Established 1837. Your superintendent is Forrest Claypool. Yeah, right. Accreditation, accreditation 
North Central Association of Colleges and Schools. We have 660 schools. The budget at one time was 2015 was $5.69 billion. You have 396,683 students. Then it rose, uh, then I would say teachers, you have 21,729. Staff, you got 37,322. Like I said, the student population is 396,683. Now, it dropped from last year to this year in terms of student attendance. And you got to realize, when the attendance drops, that affects personnel. Personnel in the sense of uh, especially an instructor, a gym instructor. It's a whole lot of ramifications from that. So we're talking about also truancy. And that falls on you, parent. How can a kid miss 41 days of school and he's not ill? And then you send him back without, you know, uh, absence or doctor statement or anything. What is that? What's that about? But then again, as you, if you deal with the statistics, it says that 53% of this population is low to limited literacy skills. So if I'm a parent and I don't, I don't care about reading or writing, then that transfers to my child. I don't, really, I don't care if you go to school or don't go to school. But at the times I do care, so I got something to do, I need a babysitter. So you so you send them to, to the school. Come on, people. We got to rise up. And another thing, if you really want to affect change, and it's coming, you can see it. Because so you, you just can't be oppressive and, and think that people are going to just lay there all the time. You can only be stepped on for so long, and then one day you're going to rise up and be that man you're always supposed to be, or that woman. I always ask kids all the time, I say, do you know a real man when you see one? Do you know a real woman when you see one? They know. They know. But then they've been lied to so much till you know, uh, it becomes like shell shock. You ever live next to the L and pretty soon you don't even hear the L? You're oblivious to it? You're shell shock. And that's what's happening to us with our day-to-day -day living. All I can do it's just try and raise the issues and see if we can get together. And also, you need to get together with your aldermen and come up with a voting drive. We got these young kids at 18 years of age. Let's get them to vote. Get, you know, get all the applications you need to get from each block club. Get, get, you know, get, a, get a coalition of people to work towards voting. And that's how you affect change. Not a bullet, not all that foolishness, the pen. And in the coming days, we're going to have a lot of people coming through here, educators, politicians, and hopefully uh, Danny Davis. I saw him, so I think he'll be coming on. But I need to be hearing from you in our next session. You need to, you know, say how you feel and how can we affect change. So that's always talking about it. So my thing is this. All this gun, this, this gun play, the guy that wrote the, uh, the memorandum, uh, the moratorium in terms of uh, the death penalty, he went to jail. That was Ryan. What I'm saying is, you had a guy that came in from another city to shoot a young lady because he knew that the death penalty wasn't feasible here. You need to reinstate the death penalty. If you're 16 carrying a gun, you shoot somebody? Take him to his 18 and 19, whatever the age is, in reformatory school or whatever it is, then put him into a dope situation, and then, you know, fine. Yeah. Yeah. I'm told I gotta wrap up, but you know, the things I've said, I hope that you internalize some of them, and hopefully next week, we'll have some people on that can talk about the educational process, and hopefully, things will look better. But right now, you got to man up. You know, you need to be right here where I am. Still looking at me. You need to be saying something. Because I know you'll be feeling it. Discuss every time you look at TV. 15 dead. 20 wounded. That comes with displacement. When they move out of the projects, they move elsewhere with that same mentality. And people like dealing with it. Now, I want to say goodbye to my granddaughter. Bye, honey. I'll see you in a minute. I love you. Little Molly Poop. Now, 
The rest of you all, take care of your family. Take care of yourself. And remember, if you feel as though you run out of rope, tie a knot and hang on. Everything's going to be okay. Peace.